What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So it's 2023 and Samsung Goodlock has been around for quite a few years now. It has evolved over time. It is still not perfect by any means, but I want to kind of go ahead and show you guys a couple of features of it that I think a lot of people would enjoy. Obviously it has changed over time as One UI has evolved, so has Goodlock. And in order to get this, if you're not familiar, you're going to want to jump into the Galaxy Store to start. And once it loads, you're going to do a quick search for exactly that. Good luck. And when this comes through, you'll see this is the current logo for it. And when it comes in, it is basically a shell of all the options of what you can download to change up what is already pre-built in One UI. So, for instance, we've downloaded Lockstar, HomeUp, and Clockface. That is not all that is available. You can scroll up and you can see Theme Park will give you other options for customizing um, easily and quickly create and apply themes. You do Pentastic, which will apply various styles for the S Pen. Wonderland, which will create 3D motion wallpapers with various effects. Keys Cafe, Navstar, and yeah, Quickstar. You get the point. There's quite a few options here to tweak your device without having to download a new launcher if you don't want to use Nova or anything of that nature. Um, a couple of the main ones that I use, like I said, and the main one we're going to look at today is HomeUp. When you download HomeUp, once you originally jump into it, you'll have the little download icon, so you're going to want to click on that. And when it downloads, this will be your new launch for HomeUp. This is a piece of good luck, and this will allow you to customize the home page. When you do that, you'll be able to change the home screen grid, so you can have it much larger than what comes by default in One UI. You can even add favorites max count to increase that. So if you guys can see, I have about, what, seven icons right now at the bottom on my launcher. I can go up to nine, and it just makes it that much easier if you like to multitask and have all your options down here. Um, it's very quick and easy to apply. Beyond that, which you guys probably saw, when I go to my launcher, no longer do I have pages that go left to right. I have that vertical scroll, which is very, very useful. I prefer this over the page view that Samsung keeps continuously implementing for some reason. The one downside that I do want to talk about are these priority apps. We're in February 2023, like I said, and uh, unfortunately you still cannot disable priority apps. It will update over time. So every time you want to uh, hypothetically launch a McDonald's app, right? The more you launch it, that'll be moved up in the priority listing. It's kind of useful. The issue is if you turn this on and off, it resets to default each time and you have to relearn the process. It can get a little tedious. Aside from that, though, if you're not interested in those priority apps, you're kind of stuck at this point. But I just wanted to let you guys know that that is a thing. So beyond that, you can obviously change your home screen grid, like I said, your favorite max count. You can loop pages with this nothing crazy. The app list, and here you go, is exactly that style we were talking about. You can change app trade to list style. Finder access, background blur control, background color control, and hide app icon label. These are kind of what my standard is when I use One UI. Beyond that, you can change some aspects of the folder. You can change your folder grid size and how many icon sizes. Backup and restore if you want to have a backup and then automatically reload this each time or on a new device. Uh, share manager and a task changer. This is a pretty useful tool too. I don't utilize it personally but it will allow you to change the task view, as you can see, to a list, grid, stack, vertical list, or slim list. Beyond that, you can do a mini mode, center the currently running app in the center instead of off to the side. You could also change the app label if you want to show it or not, the search bar, recommended apps, and the list goes on. Again, pretty cool little aspect to have. I leave this off, but if you're someone that likes to tinker with the uh, task changer, this is an option for you too. Again, not going to really touch on these in this video too much, but another one I do like is Clock Face. This will give you the ability to change the always on display or lock screen. If I click lock screen, it'll give you just a couple of different designs for that AOD and lock screen. So you can see it's showing live time. That's what I currently have is the wording of the time spelled out. But these are just some other options. There's quite a few as you can see. Beyond that, if you jump back into Clock Face and do AOD, same concept, it'll give you a couple more options here as well. There you go. Look pretty comparable to what you just saw on the lock screen, if you didn't notice that. So yeah, let me know guys, are you utilizing good lock at all? 
it's like I said, it's been around a while. It's come and gone in better versions. It's been iterated pretty heavily. Still not perfect, like I said. Can't get rid of that priority apps, but if you're looking for a vertical app scroller, this might be your, uh, your go-to option without downloading a third-party launcher if they're still not supporting multitasking gestures and if you like doing all that. So yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up this video. Subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.